David here with Figboot on Pens. Today we're going to be taking a look at a pen from one of my favorite manufacturers, Twisby. And I haven't taken a look at a Twisby here in a while. When I was first getting started uh, in fountain pens, the, the first pen that really triggered my interest uh, was the Twisby Diamond 580. Um, that it had just a real high cool factor for a relatively inexpensive price and it really kind of triggered something in with me uh, that kind of took me on this pen journey. But I've always been a fan of the, the Twisby models, and we're going to take a look at one of the pens that they came out with recently, uh, which is the Eco. Uh, the, whenever Twisby comes out with a brand new model, it ca typically causes a, a little bit of hubbub, and this one, it was, it was highly anticipated. So what I'm going to do today is we're going to take a look at the, uh, the parts and the features of this pen. We're going to take a look at some of the things I care for and some of the things I don't care for. I'll show some measurements, we'll do some size comparisons, and then provide a writing sample. Now, Twisby released this into the marketplace to basically compete with the likes of the, the Lamy Safari uh, and the Pilot Metropolitan down in that under $30 range. Uh, and that they basically did a lot of things to reduce their costs on this pen. And when I say they reduced their costs, I don't want to say that in a bad way. There's a difference between being cheap and then reducing costs. And, uh, and there, I really don't feel that there's anything cheap about this pen. But they do reduce the cost compared to some of their normal things they do. For example, uh, their normal packaging on most Twisby pens is this nice hard plastic. And the box for the Eco is kind of a more softer plastic. First of all, ECO stands for economical. So we got that going for us. So here is the uh, the box that it comes in. And you can see here that there's really no instruction manual. The instruction manual is kind of incorporated into the paper around the box. Whoops. Here, uh, there was a little sticker in here just basically saying, please don't use alcohol to clean the pens. Uh, there is also a little instruction manual here that talks about how to fill the pen. And basically it's telling you, hey, fill up the pen, and when it's wet, don't bash it up and down on a piece of paper. Please wipe off the nib, and the nib will be happy. So that's the instructions that they give you. And then here is the pen. This particular model, uh, the, this particular Eco comes in two different colors right now. Comes in a black as well as a white. Uh, and then lately also, Twisby has been teasing that they potentially are having one come out with uh, that's all clear on both sides. Uh, one of the things that they do include here is they include their Twisby wrench to disassemble the pen. Uh, on all of their other pens, this wrench is metal, and this particular one is plastic. Again, I'm assuming to save costs. Uh, it also includes a little bit of silicone grease, which is nice to have. And then we have the pen. And like I said, this is the black version. And then I actually have a white version here as well. So here is the white version and the black version. Um, we'll take a look at the, the black version during the review just because we don't have that ink. But we'll take a look at this a little bit later during the writing sample. And, and also during some of the, the pictures. So to start off with, um, we're going to start at the finial. And this is probably one of my least favorite things about this pen. Uh, we have a little logo here and you could see in the pictures that um, it's just kind of a plasticky looking logo. I, I like the logo but it's just the finial part itself uh, I'm, I'm not too fond of. You can see here uh, how it compares to the logo that is on the Diamond 580 and you can see how and that's typical to what the uh, how the logo is represented kind of in this little shiny uh, little bulb of uh, material. And I think I always thought that was very, very cool. And so I'm just not a big fan of uh, of this plasticky red finial. Um, but you can see how it compares here. We have a very um, kind of blocky uh, six-sided cap. And the clip is a decent size. And that uh, it performs very well. has this line going down in it. And I guess that's a decent design. Uh, then we have a big cap band, which actually says Twisby, and then also it says uh, Eco in Taiwan. Uh, then we have the barrel, which is perfectly straight. 
and uh, and smooth. On most other Twisby models, the uh, the barrel is is faceted. Like here's the Diamond 580. You can kind of see how that barrel is faceted, uh, and this one is perfectly smooth, and that works. Uh, and then we, you can see in here the piston mechanism, and then we have the piston knob, uh, which is very nice and large, and again, uh, six-sided, and very easy to grip. Uh, this pen twists off, and underneath we can see this number five nib, and that it's, it's a very nice nib. It's, you know, I, the number five gets a little bit small for me personally, but you can see here how it compares to the, the number six on the Diamond 580. Uh, and it has a, a, a plastic feed. And one of the things that's really nice about these Twisby pens is you could fully disassemble them and they're very easy to do so. Sometimes, you know, disassembling a pen can be a little daunting if you don't feel like you know what you're doing 100%. But uh, this is very, very simple. Literally, it's friction fit. You can just pull out the nib just like this in the nib section, and it fits right back in. Uh, and then the wrench is used to disassemble the uh, uh, the piston mechanism, and you can pull that out and clean that as well. Uh, you know, in regard to pulling out the nib, the really only thing you need to be careful of is. Um, here on the section, it is a rather thin section. I, I would like that the section was just slightly bigger. It's just a little bit on the thin side for me. I typically hold my pens down near the very bottom, and that is the thinnest part of that. And you can see here in the pictures, there's actually a couple, three little nibs, we'll call them niblets, I guess, or, or raised areas on the end of the section, which are meant to guide your fingers into a particular grip. And I could do without those on this particular pen, especially just because it seems like whenever I grip the pen, I end up gripping on one of these little uh, things that jut out. I never quite get it quite right, and so it, it turns out being a little more uncomfortable than it is helpful to guide. But uh, as far as problems go, it's a pretty small one. But when you, um, if you take out the nib and you put it back, you want to make sure that it somewhat aligns with those in regard to your grip. So you just need to be careful of that, and it's very simple to do. Uh, then we have the uh, the threads, and then there is a um, uh, an O-ring here that I believe is kind of used in order to, uh, or it's there to help the cap go back on or help the cap stay on and part of this capping mechanism. It's real hard to see as well, but there is an O-ring right here before the end of the piston. And maybe it's a little easier to see here on the white model. No, no, it's not super easy, but there is an O-ring right here. And, you know, I don't particularly, uh, well, the, the reason for this is so that when you post the pen, that's actually what's holding it on, is that O-ring. But, um, you know, I, I just don't particularly care for that, just because when you rub down here, you can kind of feel the rubber on it, and I, I just wish they would have been able to figure out a different way of, of being able to post the pen, uh, besides having that exposed rubber on the outside of the pen that I thought, I think over time, potentially could wear down. Uh, now, in a lot of other Twisby models, they actually give you an extra O-ring, but in this one, uh, they, they didn't provide an extra O-ring. Uh, the pen does post, and that, you know, it is a little bit on the light side, and while I don't necessarily have a problem, someone might have a bit of a problem with it because it, it back weights it slightly, but not so much that, that I wouldn't post it. But it is very comfortable in the hand, and it is a decent length whether or not you have it posted or not posted. You don't need to use this pen posted at all. Um, it does have a real decent ink capacity, and you can see here that the piston mechanism goes back and forth, and it's a decently smooth piston mechanism, and if it ever is not smooth, uh, it's, like I said, it's easy to disassemble, and uh, and they include the silicone grease in order to uh, to grease that up. I, this pen is $29.50, I believe, like $29.50, $29.40, around that price range, and, and to be able to get a, a piston-filled pen uh, of very good quality, uh, and uh, the the, and a nib that writes very, very well is, is outstanding. This is one of the, the best pens that you can buy for, for under $30. Uh, it compares with the Pilot Metropolitan, which in itself is amazing, considering the fact that a Metropolitan is $14, $15. So the Metro is half the price of this pen, which is kind of a testament to how good the Metro is. But 
in regard to entry level pens, uh, the Eco is fantastic. And that, especially if you're looking for a pen that's slightly larger, even though the grip is roughly the same size as the Metro, but an overall larger pen, you get a demonstrator uh, and a piston uh, with a piston. Uh, that's pretty amazing. Uh, and it performs very well uh, as well, which we'll see in the writing sample. So what we're going to do now is we're going to take a look at some measurements and then we'll do some size comparisons and then we'll provide a writing sample. Here we go with some size comparisons for the Twisby Eco. Uh, there's the black version and then here's the, the white version. We'll use this for the writing sample since this one is inked up. Uh, but then here it is compared to a, a Diamond 580 and then some of the things in the uh, competitions range is uh, here's a, a Stola 3 which is Pelican's entry level uh, as well as a Pilot Metropolitan and then a Lamy Safari. And then some things a little bit outside the price range. Uh, here is a vanishing point. Then we have a Pelican M805. And it's very comparable to the M805 in regard to, to girth. And then here is a Mont Blanc 149. You can see it's considerably larger than that. So here we go with the Twisby. Eco. And this is a medium nib, and the ink is J. Herben. And excuse my French if I'm getting this wrong, but I believe it's Violet Ponce. This is what the, the ink looks like. I don't have too many purples in my collection. Uh, this is what the bottle looks like. It's a cute little bottle. Uh, and I bought this because this was my first attempt to match an ink with a pen. Uh, I had purchased this Conklin Herringbone, which for me was kind of out there as far as uh, boldness and color, and I wanted to uh, have an ink that matched it, so that's why I, I purchased this ink. Okay, here we go with the rest of the writing sample. Lazy dog. Uh, this is a very nice nib. Uh, it is a steel nib. You're not going to get a ton uh, of flex out here, but it is very smooth for a steel nib and it performs very, very well. You can get a little bit out of here, but not a ton. In regard to wetness, that um, it, it's not very dry. It uh, does a good job of, of keeping up. And how about reverse writing? Uh, it lays down an extra fine line uh, and isn't too scratchy, not too bad. And how about in regard to some fast writing? Uh, the feed has no problem in keeping up. So the Twisby Eco uh, for under $30. Uh, it's really one of the best pens that you could buy out on the market today. Uh, you know, I'm very impressed with what Twisby has done here. Um, the, you know, the Eco isn't without its faults, but uh, the, the benefits and performance far outweigh the small things that, that I have issues with. So thanks for watching, and I'll talk to you later. This is what the ink looks like. Uh, you know, I don't have too many purple inks. Uh, this is the... Uh, 
the bottle that it comes in. It was a cute little bottle, and this was my, my very first attempt at matching a pen to an ink. Uh, I purchased this Conklin herringbone just because... 